Can you start out by talking about um, why, how people go about tearing their rotator cuff and the differences in acute versus not acute? Yeah, so there's in general two different uh, groups or ways that people tear their rotator cuff tear. There can be traumatic injuries where someone has a very discreet injury, a fall onto the shoulder, a fall onto an outstretched extremity, and we consider that a traumatic tear. Maybe they dislocate their shoulder and they tear the rotator cuff at the same time. So that's one type. The other type or group of patients are these degenerative tears, and these usually occur uh, over uh, a lifetime of repetitive overhead activities, um, swimming, painting, lifting, things like that, uh, where the rotator cuff gradually degenerates and tears, uh, sometimes just from old age and wear and tear, and other times from repetitive impingement between the, the tendon and the bone that it sits underneath. There are two general types, an open rotator cuff repair or a arthroscopic rotator cuff repair, the open repair being the historical classic but very effective and still used by a lot of people and then arthroscopic repairs have become, become more common as um, uh, equipment and uh, techniques have improved and so the patients always have an anesthetic, a, gen a general, sometimes a regional and then they're positioned depending on the surgeon's preference. And then for the arthroscopic repair, there's at least two, uh, and then uh, additional small incisions, uh, smaller than what your little finger would go into, which are placed around the shoulder, in the back, the front, and on the side. And um, once the shoulder's been examined with the camera, we take the tendon, pull it back down to its anatomical location on the bone, and then use anchors with suture. Uh, the anchors go into the bone, and then the sutures pass through the torn tendon and used to pull it back down and repair it uh, to the bone. After surgery, um, patients are gonna wake up in a sling, which is there to protect the repair. Uh, we usually start motion of the elbow, the wrist, and the hand immediately, and then we typically individualize the rehab process. So depending on the patient's age, the quality of their tissue, um, you can expect to be uh, in a protective phase where we protect the motion, maybe let you do some small circular exercises. Um, those may begin uh, immediately after surgery and then we may protect the full range of motion anywhere between two and six weeks. And then depending on uh, the quality of the tissue, we'll gradually, in conjunction with the therapist, increase the range of motion that you're allowed. And usually about eight weeks, we start working on strengthening and somewhere between 12 and 16 weeks or three or four months, we start letting people return back to unrestricted activities.